Hello and welcome to the show. Well, welcome to the show. I am coming to you from the Tammy Media Television Studio. All right. And so listen, we've got a great show planned for you. This is the power of advocacy. That's what this month is all about. And I have some phenomenal gentlemen that are going to be joining us today. Uh, Mr. Curry, Mr. Walter Curry from Curry Insurance Agency, and then Mr. James Hobson, who's a behavioral wellness counselor. All right. So you're going to be able to meet them and see them. And we're going to be right back. I'm really excited. So sit back, relax, and enjoy because we'll be right back. The Curry Insurance Agency has served the community for over 30 years with hundreds of trained representatives to assist you in selecting health plans. Curry Insurance Agency is the largest marketing insurance group in the state of South Carolina for Medicare Advantage and represents all major health carriers. Annual enrollment for Medicare Advantage is October the 15th through December the 7th. Curry's motto is people don't know how much you know until they know how much you care. Call Curry Insurance Agency today at 803-536-0889. Welcome back to the show. I told you we're excited. We're in the studio. And I tell you what, I, I'm in the control room right now because guest is outside, but we're working on some things. And so I'm just excited. So what's on my mind is live your dream. Live out your dream. If you have a dream, listen, go for it. Go for it. Because I just learned from the gentleman that you're going to see the opportunity will come and they only come little at a time. But when that opportunity comes, it's time for you to make a move. And that means that door may not open ever, ever again. And so just remember that as you are going through life. And as I said, with COVID and everything, that's why I started this show back up again, because, you know, with COVID, we needed to, I needed to understand that there were things that I wanted to do and things that I wanted to be a part of and helping the community. And, you know, I'm always about helping others and blessing others. And so it gives me the opportunity to be free and to do a lot of things. I'm excited about a lot of things, as you can tell today. But one of the things that I'm most excited about is I have the opportunity to introduce someone real special. It's he is a father, a grandfather. He's the CEO of a Curry Insurance Agency. He's the founder and owner of the Camp Landy Resort. He's, I call him my mentor, y'all. I'm telling you. But this gentleman is someone who's very special in the Orangeburg community. When I tell you he's a giver, he 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 opens his arms, talks to you, gives you advice. He's there for you. And we're going to learn all about him and his power of advocacy and what he's doing as an advocate in the community. So without further ado, want to introduce you to who I call one of my mentors, Mr. Walter Curry. Come on out, Mr. Curry. Be here today and be on the Tammy Show. Well, I'm so glad that you are here with us today. I tell you, of course, you know, you're the first you're the first guest in the TV studio. And so I'm excited about that today. So, Mr. Curry, you know, I, I'm talking about you as being a mentor, but I want you to tell us a little about, bit about who Mr. Walter Curry is. You know, it's kind of hard or difficult, I would say, to talk about yourself, but uh, I'm a resident of Orangeburg, uh, South Carolina. I grew up out in what I call the country, uh, went to George Washington Carver High School back in the day. It's now Edisto High School from there, um, played football, um, got a football scholarship, attended North Carolina a &T in Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, played up there, lettered uh, for three years, came back to Orangeburg and uh, started the, getting into the insurance business. And um, I'm married to my wife, Cheryl. Uh, we have a son, Walter Curry Jr. He's, a, well, Dr. Curry now, and we have two beautiful grandsons. And so we're just happy to um, be at this stage in our career and have an opportunity to still help so many people. Yeah. And you must Curry, that's what you're all about. You're all about helping people. And one of the reasons that I wanted to interview you was because, you know, you, as I said, you're a giver. You're a person that's always being there and giving advice and just really 
really helping people in the community. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about was becoming a business owner, because what people don't know about you, and I didn't say, was that you are quarterback <laughs> at a and that's, that's your alma mater. And, and, and so having said that, what made you decide to go into business? For yourself. Well, um, when I came back to uh, Orangeburg from North Carolina, I got a few jobs. Um, my mom, I was I was staying. I was in my early twenties, and I was living at home with my mom. My father died uh, when I was twenty years old, and um, so I came back home to be with her and my brothers and sisters. And um, in my mom's house, she just couldn't sit around. She said, "If you're going to stay here, you're going to have to go to work." And so I, I tried a few jobs, but then I sort of found that it was very difficult for me to be to work on time. I may as well be honest with you. And I had a difficult time taking orders from somebody else. And I said to my mom, I said, this is not working for me. She said, well, then you better find a way to work for yourself. And so I had an opportunity to get into the insurance business with a company called North Carolina Mutual. Uh, which is um, located in Durham, North Carolina, and happens to be a um, black insurance-owned company. Now, they're no longer in business as an insurance company at this point, but that's what gave me my start. And um, from there, um, we I brought my brother in the insurance business, and we sort of came together and created a partnership and sort of go from there. Um, I enjoyed talking to people, meeting people, and helping people. And then one thing led to from one thing to another. And when I found out that I can make some real money at it by just talking, mm -hmm. I said, well, this is the game I need to be in. <laughs> wow. Just, <laughs> hey, listen, just talking, okay? And you know, I know all about just talking because we've had our conversations, me, you, and Mrs. Curry, just sitting around just talking. So, you know, Mr. Curry, when it comes to the insurance business, um, what intrigued you about the insurance business? Well, the thing I enjoy most about it is when I sit down and talk to a client about their insurance needs is I try to understand where they are and try to find solutions to their situation. And then um, I try to put myself in their position and let them know the importance of having adequate insurance, whether it's life insurance or health insurance. And that's the areas that I, that we specialize in, life insurance and health insurance. And um, when you sit with someone and then um, over the years, um, you see a claim that come in and I hear people tell me that if it had not been for me coming by their home, sitting down with them and encouraging them to get a life insurance policy, for example, and, and then someone passes away, I'm the first person that they look for. Mm -hmm. And I take it very serious and I try to treat my clients as if they were my own relatives. And so I just enjoy helping people. Um, and you sort of evolve from there. Um, and when I was, look at our situation today, we have so many people out there that need insurance, mm -hmm. but they need it from the right people, people who actually care about them. And like you said earlier, our motto is people don't really care about how much you know until they know how much you care. And so mm -hmm. um, this is what I do. This is what I teach the agents that are part of the Curry Insurance Agency to do. Take care of the people and then your clients will ultimately take care of you. Yeah. And, you know, Mr. Curry, having said that about your agents, how do you determine who those agents are? Because I know you probably look for a special type of person. Talk about that. Well, the first thing I look for in any agent is uh, will they work? And, uh, you know, if they will work, we believe that we can teach them everything else that they need to know. And then the second thing I look for is their character. Will they, are they, why are you in this business? I, I want to know that from them because if they're on in it for the money, then I don't really want them to be a part of us. But if they're there to service and help their customers, 
then we have something that we could talk about because we believe that customers come first. Um, and so that's the kind of agent we look for. Will they work or, or, or do you care about people? Because in our line of work, you, you must have a servant mentality. You, you don't, you help them because a lot of people don't understand how insurance policies really work. So it takes someone that's willing to be patient with them that will get back with them, answer their questions, no matter what the question is, and give them the kind of service that they deserve. So this is what we look for in the type agents that we bring on board with us. That's right. And Mr. Curry, I kind of want you to talk about um, Curry Agency, because with the Curry Insurance Agency, you specialize with health. And so I kind of want you to talk about that a little bit and what made you decide to stick to just that one area. I know you do some other things, but just that particular area that you specialize in. Oh, absolutely. Well, we do life insurance um, at the Curry Insurance Agency as well, but our primary focus is in the health market, and that is the Medicare Advantage, and we also do what we refer to as Obamacare or the ACA. Um, and I'll talk about Medicare Advantage first. Medicare Advantage is a um, where a private insurance company offers Medicare products uh, to the general public. And so um, a little background on that. In 1965, they came out with Medicare under the Johnson administration, and it was working well for a period of time. But in 2003, under the Bush administration, they came out with a, a um, prescription drug plan and they required anybody that was on Medicare to have a prescription drug card. And then around 2006, they came out with part C, which is Medicare Advantage. And what, how it works is they, uh, and they mainly did it to create uh, competition and to get rid of a lot of waste, fraud and abuse because they were saying that the way it was being run, Medicare was about to go under. Now mm -hmm. that they have privatized Medicare in, in a way of speaking, um, it is now working just fine. And so they allow insurance companies to um, go out and enroll people into Medicare Advantage plans. And so we, we represent all of the major carriers in the state of South Carolina, uh, companies like uh, United Healthcare, Humana, um, Aetna, WellCare, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, we represent them all. And the reason why we do that is because we want our agents to not just work in the best interest of a particular company, but to work in the best interest of the clients that they serve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's when it comes to Medicare Advantage. And right now, uh, annual enrollment actually starts on tomorrow, November right. the 15th through December 7th. And doing, it is during this time that you can change plans. Uh, um, if you're not enrolled into a plan, no matter what your situation is, um, you can enroll during this period of time. Uh, we have um, literally hundreds of agents um, in South Carolina and, and in several other states that are going to be really going at it starting on tomorrow. So if you're someone out there that has, if you're on Medicare or if you know someone that is on Medicare that needs some help, contact the Curry Insurance Agency and we will get someone to assist you. And, and the reason why we want people to contact us because you see all kinds of commercials on television. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably see Jamie Walker on there, the gentleman <laughs> JJ. called JJ, and uh, then Joe Namath is on there advertising. <laughs> but the problem with that is that they're just someone on on TV, they will call in. But we believe that it, it takes more than just enrolling in a plan. You need somebody that's going to actually give good service. And this is what we train our agents to do. And um, we're, we've got some of the best in the business with the Curry Insurance Agency. Wow. So then one of the things I know that people may be looking, what's that age for to be a part of Medicare? Because some people really don't know that. Well, that's a good question, Tammy. Uh, Actually, there is no age on it. It, it is There are two ways that you can uh, be on, on Medicare. And most people get on it once they turn 65. 
and then they will qualify for uh, the, what we call the red, white, and blue card. Mm -hmm. And the other way is that you, because someone may be disabled, even at 30 years old, we've seen 18 years old, have a red, white, and blue Medicare card. And so as long as you have a Medicare card with parts A and B, you mm -hmm. can qualify to enroll into a Medicare Advantage plan. Wow. You know, that's why I wanted you to come on the show, because like I said, you advocate for people. And this show, this show this month is about the power of advocacy. Advocacy. It's all about helping people and all about making sure that people are are know the information. They have the knowledge because knowledge is key. And Mr. Curry, that's one of the things I love about you. You're going to give up that knowledge each and every time. I learn something from you every time I talk to you. And so one of the, the other things that I wanted to ask you about was how important is it now for people to have insurance? Because a lot of people say, oh, insurance is a, and I've heard this and I know you have, insurance is a scam. All they do is scam you. What do you tell people that say that? <laughs> well, it's a scam until you need it. Um, you, 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 today, if you go to a hospital, for example, and uh, you go through the process and they'll take you back there and they say, okay, how are you going to pay for this? And if you tell them that you don't have insurance, obviously they still have to give you some service but it's the quality of service you get because it's all about whether or not you, you they're going to get paid and 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 I and I do know from personal experience when they know that they're going to get paid you have insurance to pay them you're going to get better care is is very I would encourage anybody to uh and in some of the plans that we offer it, there is no premium associated with it whether it's the Obamacare or the ACA, some refer to it, um, or the Medicare Advantage plans that we offer. It's a zero premium plan. Mm -hmm. So, but again, you still need to talk to someone who has been trained and educated so that you can, they can inform you in the right direction to go. That's right. But I and definitely okay. would not encourage anyone not to just, just walk around with no coverage at all because the plans with the uh, ACA, if you're under 65 and you don't have a Medicare card, you can get enrolled in a plan. You just need to reach out and we have um, Tammy, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Karen and Bernice with us. And I have a lot of people and I, you know, I'm getting a little old now. I can't remember all these names off the top of my head, but uh, they're the best in the business. And if you're from Orangeburg, uh, they used to work for the Family Health Center and mm -hmm. they were, they did the uh, ACA there. And mm -hmm. um, and when the Trump administration came into business there, and I have to put it that way, uh, they defunded those organizations like the Family Health Center. Mm -hmm. And someone told them that they needed to come because they enjoyed what they doing, um, they were doing and they enjoyed helping people. And someone recommended that they come talk to the Curry Insurance Agency. And so we got them involved. And you probably, if you're around Orangeburg, you probably see them on billboards and all yes, that kind yes. of stuff. And, and that's Bernice and Karen. They're, they're experts at it. They're the best in the business in Orangeburg County. Um, we represent, um, when it comes to the ACA, um, Molina, Ambetter and Blue Cross and Blue Shield. They are the top um, in the state of South Carolina. And so, what, oh, I'm sorry. Go no, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, what's the enrollment now for, for the Obamacare? Is it the um, same? Annual enrollment starts November 1st, and this year it will end January 15th. Okay. So anytime during that period of time, you can call um, to the Curry Insurance Agency and which is area code 803-536-0889, and we will get someone to assist you. Now, I don't do a whole lot of enrolling people myself, but I have people that will do that. That's right. So you've, you've done this for over 30 years. So now it's time to turn it over to the young folks, to the other people that can run around and, and do all that. But I know you exactly. still have some of your special clients that you deal with. So, Mr. Curry, you know, when, as you were talking about that, and I want to talk about that, um, talk about this pretty quickly because I want to ask you about Camp Landy as well. But talking about business owners, business owners and insurance when it comes to health care. You know, we always say for a business owner, when you look at that, insurance is high. I mean, we're talking like $500 to $600, $1,000 a month. 
what is it that we can that business owners can do for their health insurance? What advice do you have for them? Uh, well, get in contact with us because actually there we we can design plans to fit your budget. Um, and, and and we're good at it. Um, we've it used to be that it would be so expensive. For someone would say, well, I just got to take a risk and hope nothing happens. Well, that's not true today because we because of the ACA, we can actually find a plan to fit most people's budget because of the subsidies that are given um, from the federal government. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I would encourage anyone out there um, to get it, give us a call or some other agent in your area that you trust. And I would say this, only do business with someone that you trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we, if you give us a chance, we believe that we can earn your trust. Well, we're going to give you a chance. Come on, folks. You heard it right here. Mr. Curry of Curry Insurance Agency. So, Mr. Curry, I want to want to switch a little bit because, you know, you have a place that's called Camp Landy Resorts. Now, I didn't bring any pictures because, you know, I want people to be surprised when they start coming out. And, and we'll put up some pictures a little later when we do some other things. But talk about Camp Landy and how that all that came about. Uh, well, it was a vision that was given to me, I would say, by God himself. Um, it's, it's located about 12 miles out of Orangeburg, uh, out on Chillens Bridge Road. And um, the property that it's built on has been in my family since 1882. Uh, my grandfather, I never met him. He died long before I was born. And he purchased the property. My mother, my father told me that my grandfather was 12 years old when Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. And, wow. that, and he purchased the property in 1882 and has been in my family ever since. Um, in 1964, the property was divided and my aunt got that property and she passed and it went to her son and then he pass and well, he had to be put in a nursing home in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. And the courts, I petitioned the courts to let me purchase the property at the appraised value. And they allowed me to do that. And I just went, and so that's how I came into this property, but it's actually been in, like I said, in my family all that time. And I just didn't want to just go out there and put mobile homes on it or do some other things. I said, well, you know, I've been to, um, I do a lot of traveling, Tammy, mm -hmm. and um, been, you know, whether it's Jamaica, and I said, man, these people, I said, there are a lot of people who won't even go to Florida. I said, well, I'll tell you <laughs> what, I'm going to bring some little bit of Florida and Jamaica down here. And That's so good. if you notice, Camp Land is, um, is, it was named after my grandfather, and we have well over 100 and I think 40 palm trees out there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a very, I'm proud of it. Um, we, we've been working on it for the past four or five years. And um, I'm excited to announce that um, this year, uh, Claflin University is going to have their presidential gala at Camp Landon Resort. That's and right. So, uh, wish we, you did have some pictures, but maybe the next time you'll have some. Come on out. It's um, located at 1941 Chillings Ridge Road in Orangeburg. And you know, Tammy, you're working here. You're helping me with my website design. And it should yes, be up yes. pretty soon. Yes, sir. I mean, it, it's a, and I can tell folks, it's a beautiful place. It is the event uh, venue, the premier event venue, outdoor venue um, in, uh, in this side of the state. I mean, now, you know, I'm from Charleston, Mr. Curry. So, you know, we have the beaches and all of that. But when you step on Camp Landy Resort, you have just stepped into something that's magical. That's all I can say is, ma and we were out there last night, right, Miss Curry? Right, Looking right. At, you know, kind of scoping it out and seeing where things were going to go. But I'm excited about that. And Mr. Curry, I appreciate you so much because just seeing that, it made me say, okay, I know it's time. I can do this. I, I, I can, I can live my dream. And that's what I was talking about. And the other thing about that is you are an advocate for people. And, and a lot of times when, like you say, Mr. Curry, when you help people, it helps you, you know, because I see you when I see you and your wife, Miss Ms. Curry, and you all are talking and your sisters and, you know, and the whole family, 
it's 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 a it's a wonderful family and it's all about helping each other and um and that's what i love about the curries well absolutely and thank you so much for saying that um you know one of the things that we want to do out there is to make it make it affordable for the average person to come out and bring their family you know we have weddings there um family gatherings there um and just mentioned claflin having their homecoming gala there um uh, but it's a beautiful place it's it's, it's pretty you know what 15 acres yeah. um that we've developed and we're still developing it and so um we're excited about it an opportunity to help service people we want to do stuff for some kids um, and so there are a whole lot of things that we want to do with this. That's Absolutely. right. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. And I just appreciate you so much. And of course, you taking time out of your busy schedule to come by the studio and and be with us today and, and really to talk about Curry Insurance Agency and Camp Landy and also about how you have have been in business all of this time. I mean, you know, it's uh, this year it's all about entrepreneurs. I mean, it's about living out your dream and bringing that dream into a reality. So Mr. Curry, you know, one of the things that I always ask is for advice. What advice would you have for business or people who want to go into business? What would you tell them today? Well, the first thing I would tell them is to be true to yourself. Um, You know, you get into a business for the right reason. Um, And you cannot be afraid to take chances. And if you, you you get into something and you, if you see it's not working, make adjustments or either make some changes and, and move forward. But, and then I would also encourage you to deal with positive thinking people, people who are not going to throw cold water onto your dreams and believe in yourself, unite with people that have the same mindset that you have. And I'm so encouraged because um, I met a lot of uh, young people and and students from South Carolina State, from Claflin, um, they come out. And for the most, all of them talk about the type of business that they are trying to develop. No longer are they saying, I want to go to school so I can get a job. Mm -hmm. They are now finding ways to create their own job. And this is what it's all about, because if you live in America, the sky is the limit or and 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 do not allow others. I would say this to put limitations on you, on you. You know, surround yourself with good, positive people, save some money and then work half time. Now, what I mean by half time is uh, is uh, nine to nine. That means you're working 12 hours a day and you got another 12 hours to go sleep. That's good. And because in the beginning of any business, it's going to take sacrifice. It's, it sounds good to own your own business, but unless you're willing to pay a price, you cannot, you will not be successful. Yeah. So these are some of the things that I wouldn't, I don't know whether it, whatever business that you're doing, you have to believe in yourself, surround yourself with good people and do not be afraid um, because if you, you got to ask for what you want. That's and right. then when the opportunity is there, and, I, and I'll say this, the window of opportunity opens for most people in their lifetime. But once that window of opportunity opens, it automatically begins to close. And if you don't go through, well, that's on you. That's right. Come on. Come on, Mr. Curry. You you preaching the word now. <laughs> you preaching the word. Listen, I, I, I tell you what, that window is, is so small, like you said, and it will open. And God, you know, we know God opens all doors. But as you said, he's going to open the door, but it's up to you to walk through a faith without works is dead. Uh, and so, Mr. Curry, I appreciate you so much. The last thing I want to ask you, I ask all my guests because I'm putting it together in a journal is three words that describe you. I didn't tell you this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, three words that describe me. Uh, 
peace, love, and happiness. All right. I like and that. And let, let me say this, Tammy, you know, no matter what you do, but if you don't have a relationship with God, I don't believe that you can truly be successful. Mm -hmm. So walk with God and make sure that whatever you do, be right with the Lord. And, and if you do it, and if you keep that in your mind, I think that your things will generally work out for you. Wow. Just make sure that whatever you do is right with God. That's right. Well, Ms. Curry, I tell you what, I'm, I'm excited that you're on the show today. I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Please give the family my best. And and we are just, um, I, I'm just honored, sir. I am truly, truly honored that you would um, take me under your wing. And, and I thank you for that. I really do. Thank I you. want thank to say you. that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Tammy. Thank yes, you for having me and being a part of yes, the Tammy sir. Show. All right. <laughs> All right. Come on. I'm going to have you do that for, for a commercial. I'm going to have you do that just like you did it, Mr. Curry. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Curry, thank you so much for joining the show. You take care of yourself. All thank right. You. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. All right, you heard it right here, Mr. Walter Curry. Listen, we're going to take a break because now we're going to hear from a gentleman who is a behavioral wellness counselor, and we're going to hear what he has to say. We'll be right back. The Curry Insurance Agency has served the community for over 30 years with hundreds of trained representatives to assist you in selecting health plans. Curry Insurance Agency is the largest marketing insurance group in the state of South Carolina for Medicare Advantage and represents all major health carriers. Annual enrollment for Medicare Advantage is October the 15th through December the 7th. Curry's motto is people don't know how much you know until they know how much you care. Call Curry Insurance Agency today at 803-536-0889. The Cecil Williams South Carolina Civil Rights Museum is the Palmetto State's first and only museum. It honors a generation of people, black and white, throughout the state of South Carolina who deserve to be remembered for their unselfish commitments and sacrifices. Enjoy an immersive and entertaining virtual tour. For more information, visit www.cecilwilliams.com. Welcome back to the show. Well, listen, you know, had a great time with Mr. Curry and thanked him so much for being on the show. I tell you what, you learn a lot from people. And, um, you know, when you have someone who is a business owner, as long as he's been a business owner and how you can learn and glean from everything that he says and his, his wife and family, they all just beautiful people. And so, again, I want to thank Mr. Curry for being on the show. Now we have a special guest. OK, this guest is special because, one, he's married to my sister. Two, <laughs> he's a, he's a great father. He's dedicated husband. He he loves people. He um, is just all around just a special special guy, and he's a behavioral wellness counselor, and he's here to talk about anger management and um, domestic violence offenders. And, and we're going to get into it because this is about the power of advocacy. So come on out, my brother, Mr. James Hopson. How are you? Me, I'm fine yourself. All right. Listen, I gave you that introduction. And you didn't even smile. Come on now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, James? I'm doing good. It's great. It's great to see. And I know my sister's behind there. So, hey, hey, sis. All right. So listen, James, kind of mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about yourself, because I want people to understand who you are and why you are in the behavioral wellness counselor. Um, why you you know why you started started that and to do that. So let's talk about James Hobson. Well, in truth, I didn't start it. Um, it's. It kind of developed out of a need that was present in the community. Um, I've been working in Orangeburg, Calhoun, Columbia, Charleston area. I've been working in the area for about 12 years now. Um, I have a family. Family's here, most of my family anyway. Um, but the need came out of um, real lived feet on the ground experience. That's pretty much all it was. Um, I started in 
uh, physical therapy, physical training, um, and then noticed that the number of my clients who would come to show up to classes on a regular basis every day, no change, absolutely not. Um, mm -hmm. They would come in, be there for a year, two years, leave out, come back, same thing, no change. Mm -hmm. um, so I started asking a question, and the question was, what is it about our experiences? What is it that's stopping us from experiencing or uh, achieving the changes that we're looking for? And that could be in anything. That could be, um, at the time, it was in physical fitness, but it could be in, in overall wellness. Uh, it could be in mental health. It could be in family. It could be in business. What is it that's preventing us from reaching the goals um, that we're trying to achieve? Um, and that led me to doing some digging. Um, I did um, a number of a, a, a series of question and answer social history questionnaires that I put to the general community that I was working with. Um, and then in the process, started working with um, a group of folks who received referrals from the Department of Social Services and the Department of Juvenile Justice for families that were in distress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing led to another, and before long, I was facilitating uh, group sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions with folks who found themselves uh, with their, their children either removed or threatening removal, um, looking at possible incarceration for domestic uh, incidences. Um, and yeah, so it, it sort of, I didn't start it, it sort of developed as a reaction, as a response to a need that was felt there in the community. Mm -hmm. And so I forgot to mention that you, are, when you talk about physical um, fitness, that you um, also help people um, with physical training. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a fitness coach as well. Mm -hmm. And I also forgot to mention that you lived in Orangeburg at one time too. Uh, and in many ways still do. Yeah. <laughs> Back and <laughs> forth. Come on now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So so let's talk about what a behavioral wellness counselor is. Um, it's, it's, it's a marriage, if you will. So for many years, there have been behavioral counselors. Um, and then for many years, there have been wellness counselors. Uh, but the need to be aware of yourself and how you feel, mm -hmm. um, to be able to exist in your space and be cognizant of all of the different pieces that make up who you are and give them their due. Mm -hmm. um, quite often we find ourselves in a crisis and why? Most of the time, no, it's, but most of the time we find ourselves in a crisis because somewhere along the line, we've neglected a piece, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Simple example, ask someone you know, to identify themselves and the first thing they say is, well, this is what I do for a living. I'm a cook or I'm a mother or um, I wait tables or I drive cars. This is what I do for a living, okay? But I didn't ask you what you did for a living. I asked you who you are. Um, and quite often we don't take the time to be us mm. and we're so engrossed in being the thing that we're required to be at that moment mm -hmm. that we neglect the other part of us. So mm -hmm. being a behavioral wellness counselor um, allows me to focus on what it is that a person needs to know, ask the questions they need to ask, mm -hmm. find the solutions they need to find to make themselves whole. So having said that, you know, one of the things that I talk about, this is the power of advocacy. And, you know, I, I, I had a, um, I have a couple of domestic violence um, women that I will be talking with in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. And I know that, as you said, you work with uh, first offenders. We talked about this. Mm -hmm. um, people who come to you for the first time for, in your treatment program. And so I want to know what that treatment program really looks like. What do you focus on? Some of the things that you focus on in that treatment program for domestic violence offenders. Um, so first, there's an acknowledgement that no person, no experience is, is alike. 
Everyone is an individual. Everyone's experiences are their own. Um, and they come either to a situation or a relationship out of their own. We all have our mess and we all come to our own mess the way we do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing we try to do is get an understanding of the individual. Who are you? Um, I need a, I need to get a good need to get a look at the pieces that made up you the individual. Um, we look at your upbringing. We look at your family structure. We look at um, what are the experiences, some of the experiences that stand out in your life. If I ask you, um, did you have two parents in the home? Did you have one parent in the home? If you had two, what was the relationship like between both parents? If you had one. Um, did you ever experience, did you ever, did you ever witness um, acts of mm -hmm. violence in the home? Um, was this something prevalent in your environment, in your community? Um, was this something you were exposed to when you went to school? Um, what are the building blocks that make up your behavioral instincts? Um, and then we try to get an idea or help the individual get an understanding of their triggers. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. In your experience, what are the things that lead you to um, conflict? Um, we all have that one or two pet peeves. You know what I mean? Right, um, right, right. What are those things that get you? You know, mm -hmm. maybe it's mm -hmm. maybe it's your partner leaves the leaves the cabinet door open. Um, Maybe it's it's your male partner who doesn't put the toilet seat down. Maybe it's maybe yeah. it's, um, you know someone who uh, I don't know uses all of the mouthwash and, and doesn't replace it. Or you know, it's usually small, little, t tiny things like that that mm -hmm. that give you a clue as to what that person's tolerance level mm -hmm. is for um, conflict uh, compromise. Mm -hmm. um, so we dig a little bit into the day-to-day -day wow. behaviors of an individual to give them an idea, give them a clue as to, you know, okay, what exactly are we working with? What, what, right. what right. Yeah. So, so one of the things that came to mind, and, and I was just thinking about it as you were talking, um, about what it is that makes that person tick and the things that you have to really dig into to kind of help them through mm -hmm. that process. What are some of the commonalities that you are finding in um, in your in in the people who have been um, who are domestic violence offenders? Ooh. You didn't see that one coming, did you? Can I say that on the on the show? Can I answer that truthfully on the show? Yeah, yeah, please, please. Really? Okay. Yeah, please. You can say whatever you want to say. I mean, I'm not gonna bleep it out. Right. Not at this point. Well, I mean, no, the reason I ask that is because there's some truths that are not comfortable. Well, I, I, listen, this is the power uh, of advocacy. Yeah, we, uh, I want people to understand. And that would that's a question I want to know. What are some of those commonalities? If I had a dollar for every young lady that came into my office telling me that she was abused by a family member, if she was touched by an uncle or a brother, I'd be a rich man. Mm. Those are some of the commonalities. If I had a dollar for every young man that came into my office that was raised by a single mother who placed her insecurities into him in an attempt to counter her own experiences. Mm -hmm. I'd be a rich man. Mm, okay. We, as a demographic of people, do not feel comfortable asking the questions that need to be asked because once you get the answer, like my mother used to say, never ask a question until you're really ready for the answer. That's right. We don't ask those questions because we'd rather lie to ourselves about the answer. Hmm. Interesting. 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 
So, so then that leads me to the question of, do you feel that um, people advocate for domestic uh, violence against, against women enough? Do you think there's enough advocacy out here for women? And then I want to I want to say that even for men that are being offended, because in your in, in in what you do, you not only see men, but you also see women, too. Correct. In fact, I had one not recently um, where the young lady was the abuser. offender. Mm-hmm. She was the offender. Um, So in answer to your question, is there enough advocacy? There's never enough advocacy because this is one of those, this is one of those issues that, you know, like a, like a theme song to a movie is playing in the background. Mm -hmm. You're aware that it's there only because when the music stops, something's missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the type of issue that this is. Um, We, we, we know it exists socially but we are willing to accept it as long as the music keeps playing, as long as everyone does their role, as long as everyone plays their part, as long as everyone shows up with a smile on their face. We will know that abuse exists, but we won't do anything about it because it's not in your favor. Mm -hmm, mm So um, there's never enough advocacy. Now, is there enough advocacy to what I will say about about male dominant violence on their female counterparts? That's a different question, and it has a different reality than female dominant violence upon male counterparts. Um, and the reason I say that is because most of the time, when it's as it was with the, with the, uh, the, the couple that I'm working with uh, most recently. She, she experienced what she considered to be violence in such a way that in her mind, the only way to react to it, to mm-hmm. keep a semblance of peace or what she could live with in herself was to react violently. Um, now, there's never an excuse you know, as, as one popular comedian says, there's always a reason. You just don't do it. You know, um, mm-hmm. but no, there's never enough. There's never enough advocacy for it. And and so that leads me to my next question. When we are talking now about the pandemic um, that's happened and the increase that we heard about with domestic violence, because of course you're in close quarters. Uh, temperatures rise, anger mm-hmm. rise, you know, all those types of things. Mm-hmm. What what else do you attribute that to? And have you seen it decline in the last few months or have you seen it on an increase in the last few months with this last year? As we're coming out, as people say, coming out of COVID, we're not really coming out of it, too, but you know what I'm saying. No, we're, we're not coming out of it. Um, and if, 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 if truth be told, there, it's not so much that there has been an increase of the increase. Mm-hmm. Um, we've sort of plateaued, and we're we're running at a high level. Um, I am very fearful of what it would look like if we increased from here. Wow. Um, the the thing to understand about domestic conflict is, most of the time, it's not over something that is irreconcilable. Um, most of the time. It's a cry for space. Um, it's a group of people or a couple people that really just need to take a time out and go to their respective corners and give themselves the space to um, to to breathe. And given that, um, I believe most of the conflicts can subside. The problem that we have, though, is in a domestic situation. Nobody wants to give quarter. Mm. You know, nobody wants to give. It's almost as if we're, we're battling with egos, and my ego is bigger than your ego. And in a domestic situation, who has dominance? Well, I'm going to take dominance. Well, you can't take it because I'm taking it. So there's a 
it just sort of builds. Mm -hmm. And COVID, COVID gave the perfect environment for it um, yeah. to allow it to metastasize and just take over every aspect because there really was no way to get away from each other. I know right. that you know, the way um, my wife and I, the way we did it was we would just go to different separate separate parts of the house. Okay, I can see by the look in your eye that I can't say anything else at this point, so I'm just going to walk away. <laughs> You're a smart man. You're a smart the, man. <laughs> that's the easiest way to deal with it. Yeah. So, so let's. Do, we only have a little bit of a little bit of time left. Wanted to ask you, what advice would you have for someone who may be enduring, you know, domestic violence, who may be going through it right now? Um. First, it's not okay. There is never a moment when it is okay. If you recognize the signs in your partner, accept the fact that that's who they are. It's not a sign of them loving you. Um, it's not an indication of how much they love you, how much they care for you. This is an individual who either has a problem controlling their emotions or is giving you the indication that they don't really respect you or, how you, or, or hold your wishes in the esteem that they should have. So it's never okay. It's never, it's, oh, it was only one time and it won't happen again. Yes, it will. If it happened once, it will happen again. So advice, um, make a plan. Make a plan for your exit. And you may not execute the exit, but just giving yourself a plan of action empowers you to enable you to stand and demand your equality. Um, stand and demand that the abuse does not happen. Quite often, one partner will feel helpless, will feel trapped, and from feeling trapped, will not give themselves the permission to insist that they be treated the way they wish to be treated. And so they allow a cycle to perpetuate. Mm -hmm. So make a plan. Find a friend. If you feel that you cannot be the person who initiates or who at least puts the plan in action, find a friend and do it through that friend. Um, but no, it, it's it's never okay. Not even a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 one of the one of the other questions that um, that that I had here was, um, is there what you would call a recovery process for domestic abuse, abusers? For the abusers or for the abused? For the abusers, that's the question um, that, that was sent in. Do you feel that there is some type of recovery process for domestic abusers? And I think that was something that I asked you earlier about the, what's the success that you've seen from the treatment? And what you told me was success that can't be measured. It's whether they completed the course or not, the treatment. So, so and, and the reason I answered the question the way I did is because our program runs 12, 24, 36 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and we measure the success of the program by whether or not the individual completed and could articulate through, could actually write it down. Mm -hmm. um, through what we call clarification, could articulate through clarification what happened, the impact it had to their families, the impact it had to themselves, what they learned in the process, and then what steps they've taken to mitigate this behavior in themselves and make sure it never happens again. So that's those are the, the measurements mm -hmm. of progress. Um, is there a recovery process for the abusers, I'd like to believe that yes, there is. Um, and I'm going to answer that based on my experience with the folks that I've worked with. Um, but again, the folks that I work with are one time, maybe two time offenders. They're not habitual. Um, mm, I see. And so that's a very big differentiation. 
I got you. I got you. I, I understand. I understand. And, and and so then the last question, because we're running out, we're going to run out of time. And, you know, uh, you can you, you talk about this all day long. <laughs> and, and, and so one of the, the, the last thing I want to ask you about is for our audience. What what do you want them to take away from from this interview? What's the takeaway? Um, always seek help. Uh, I am. I don't know about much of the audience, but I am a firm believer in God, and I believe in His purpose for all of us. And I believe that we all contain just a little bit of Him, just enough of Him, just enough of Him in us to make us those special individuals who created us to be. Okay, so there is never a moment when the abuse of that spark is okay. If there was a takeaway, that's it. Okay. You are God's child. Mm -hmm. You are God's property. Treat you with respect. And always look for help. It's never okay. okay. It's never okay. So, so my brother James we're coming to the end of this interview and I thank you so much because you have enlightened me as well as I as I know you have enlightened our viewers three things that describe you you are the behavioral wellness counselor so three mm -hmm. things that describe you three, three words. words three, three words. words three words three words three words mm -hmm. truth diligence loyalty Right. Truth, diligence, and loyalty. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Curry said, peace, love, and happiness. But <laughs> I tell you what, that's that's a combination right there. I may not as be I may not be as poetic as Mr. Curry. But, <laughs> but, the, but you said it. I like I, that. I, I stick close to my roots. Truth, diligence, and loyalty. Hey, James, thank you so much for being on show. Is there anything else you want to want to let our viewers know? Is there anything else you want to say before we close? Uh, if you're looking for further information, pull up the website, Family Engagement uh, Services. It's spelled out, familyengagementservices.org. Um, again, it's never okay. Don't ever accept it. Reach out for help. We'll be more All than right. Hey, listen, my brother, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, and as always, my sister, thank you so much for getting him on and making sure that the light is right, looking looking good. I appreciate you. Listen, thank you, have, Hey, have a blessed one here. Thank you. Thank you, you again, Jane. All right. All right. Bye -bye. <laughs> Bye bye. Right. You heard it right here on the Tammy Show. Listen, we had Mr. Curry earlier. Uh, his three words, peace, love, and happiness, talking about his business, Curry Insurance, and founder of Camp Landy Resort. And then, of course, James Hobson, uh, my brother, talking about being a behavioral wellness coach and what he does to help uh, domestic violence um, offenders, uh, first time and second time offenders and the treatment program that, that happens with that. So again, I want to thank you for joining us today. We've had some great people on and, and listen, the comments that have come in. Thank you, Dion and Thomas and, and Aunt Zelda and everybody that's watching. I, I want to thank you because I'm excited. As I said, this is in the studio. Uh, and the next time you see me, I'll probably be sitting on the white couch like Mr. Curry was sitting on the white couch. But um, want to thank you again. Join us next week for the power of advocacy. We're going to continue this advocacy. And as you know, this is Breast Cancer um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so, Tiana, thank you for that. I want to thank Tiana, as always, my assistant producer, Alicia, the associate producer. Once again, I want to remind you that live out your dream. Make it a reality. Just keep plugging at it because let me tell you what, this didn't happen overnight. Okay, I had to pay a lot of dues and it didn't happen overnight. So I want you to remember that. But more importantly, I want you to be a blessing to somebody today and every day. And please take care of yourself. Remember, wash your hands, social distance, and wear your mask. Protect yourself and protect others. Until the next time, I want you to take care of yourself. Take care now. Bye-bye.